Yes, greetings, greetings. My name is Claude Rowe, otherwise known as Bilbo Jangles. I'm the author of this book, um, recently released on Amazon KDP, entitled The Unwanted Children. Um, basically, it speaks about youths who grew up in the Caribbean, mainly those from um, one parent home, you know, who were at a disadvantage early out, you know, and some of them recognized that disadvantage because um, there were families that had cars and televisions back in the 60s while other families didn't have any. Maybe they were lucky to have a radio, you know, but with the onset of um, migration, you know, where they were taking more people from the Caribbean to go to England and America, then some families got the, the privilege of coming and then they would turn around and send for their children. So I think most of us here may fall under that heading, you know, where maybe your, your mother, your father, some relatives send for you or they sent you to some other relative who was here previously and they sent you with the expectation that you were gonna embrace the American values. Well I think it's safe to say we uh, represent the rebels <laughs> you know and would probably qualify as the unwanted children because when we came here and basically tried to incorporate into the system. We um, experienced a different set of values from the ones that we were brought up with. You understand? And a lot of the changes, changes to our diet, um, changes to the music we listen to, um, changes to the mode of dress, the way we spoke, um, didn't sit well with us. We wanted to keep our um, same Jamaican or uh, Caribbean dialect, um, you know, so communication was difficult to one and progress was difficult because, you know, Jamaicans like clocks, booty and arrow shirt and pants length and when you walk into office and say, listen to me, I look at job, <laughs> they want to show you out. So basically what we did, we chose to get higher education while trying to um, maintain our Caribbean culture. And it, it was very difficult in the beginning because um, we found that there were barriers to progress if you never really conform to the American way of life, you know? So um, we looked at alternatives and most of us who went to school, went to colleges, started studying Africana studies. And we listened to professors who often came on, on campus. I remember hearing Stokely Carmichael, Walter Rodney, um, Dr. Leonard Jeffries. Um, being a student at, at Brooklyn College, um, Walter Rodney came and gave a formidable speech you know, real revolutionary. And um, I, I remember listening to him back home in Jamaica at a, a field that we call Wembley, which is currently um, Dunoon Technical High School. And this man was a real revolutionary black educator. And shortly after that, we heard that he was blown up in his car. You understand? So then we started to realize that when you reach that level of education, recognition of who you really are and start to live in that realm, then you get a fight. You know, so basically we ended up on the outskirts of the society, um, not just in liberty or lifestyle, but also in employment. You know, and a lot of us um, weren't in the primary our secondary economic sphere, we were basically on the black market, you know. A lot of the, the unwanted children became the hustlers, 
the pioneers in the maybe should I dare say the marijuana trade, you know, for lack of a <laughs> the legal one. You know what I'm saying? And when I look now and see how all of a sudden a lot of these states are clearing up their deficit based on the legal seal of marijuana. I never dreamt I'd ever see that day. But basically, you know, that, that's what's going on. This, some of this book addressed some of those topics, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I'm also a musician with the Ayasa band, you know, and this is our latest venture entitled Itopi International Classics. Um, a few collaborations, one with Queen Amiga and myself. So we keep working, and there are people here who have their own profession. Um, Mr. Carlisle here, Maketi, um, is, is um, the CEO and initiator of an annual program that used to be held at um, What's the name of that school again? Nazareth High School. Keeps a, a show every year, and he's also um, responsible for setting up a program that incorporates artists um, in terms of their longevity, where as they get older, you know, you, you could probably get some medical assistance. Am I correct in saying so, sir? Yeah, we work closely with people who do that, but we are the Coalition to Preserve Reggae Music, CPR. Uh, I'm the co-founder, along with Sharon Gordon, and we've done this event, Reggae Culture Salute, since 2005. Looking at that unique relationship between reggae, Rastafari, Emperor Selassie, and Jamaica, and looking at the music beyond just entertainment, but looking at its... Uh, importance in spreading the culture and the liberty of Rastafari throughout the world over, over the years. So the Coalition to Preserve Reggae Music, you can check us out, see Coalition to Preserve Reggae Music, that, or, I'm sorry, cprreggae.org is the website, or cprlive.org, where we do our streaming uh, of various programs. So. Yeah, so a um, lot of productive people are here, and this office, this building that we're in is also very instrumental in, in, in our direction, our perspective. We are currently at the Magnolia Tree Earth Center. And once again, Brother Brian and Sister Kuchi are responsible for the, the um, promotion of and the progress of events that are held here. You know, so this is a place where there are different um, organizations that function. I think there's a sister organization, sister program. Would you care to say something? Yes, greetings. This is a building that is called the Magnolia Tree Earth Center at Bedford Stuyvesant Inc. And we do program within the community to uplift for our children, gardening for our children, program for seniors, health program, health and wellness program. And we do so many different things here. African um, Liberation Day, Kwanzaa, which is on what? What is the Kwanzaa? It's on, they have been the Kwanzaa on the day after thanks. No, not the Kwanzaa, Ain't giving. So they don't celebrate, we don't do the Thanksgiving, but we do the Ain't giving, which is going to be on the 25th of November. So there's so many things that we do here. This is a center that we call the beacon within the community because we do so many things. In the past, we did program for men and women who were re-entering society after being incarcerated and could not find employment. So this center, um, we are so proud of having it within our community, and we are always um, doing fundraiser to help to keep the doors open. 
Rashaka is outside, he's the, and the board of director, and he's the vice chair. So basically, our collectivity is based primarily on our experiences and our education that we receive here, you know? And many of us, as you can see, are Rastafarians. And it's good that you're here to interview us because we want the public to see and know that you can be very productive as a Rastafarian, you know? And we are willing to collaborate with other productive and progressive organizations. Yeah. Um, can I introduce my friends and family? Sister Hawkins, Donna Hawkins, over to my right. Um, worked for years with Kings County. Licensed mental health counselor. Um, my job at Kings County basically dealt with people who had addictions of various types. Carlisle McKitty, co-founder and president of the Coalition to Preserve Reggae Music and an urban planner by training with a special specialization in community economic development. Herman and Stephen, happy and proud retiree from the New York City. <laughs> from the New York City Department of Education, where I spent a number of years in the pre-K um, division with working with young children, molding their minds, hopefully. <laughs> Festus Williams, um, I as a bass player, retired um, DEP farmer worker. P. Powell, you know. Virginia. <laughs> Danny Ferman. I went to school with Billy while he was in Brooklyn College. I did art and theater, and I do a lot of carvings and paintings, and I also act in plays. I also we used to play soccer on the same team in Brooklyn College for what, four years. He, did, he keep leaving that out, but he was an excellent soccer player. <laughs> you know? And we enjoyed a lot of socialization at that time. That's what brought us as, um, what we used to call ourselves again? Kushites. The Kushites. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Right. I am, I am a professional educator also. I used to work in the school system. And I left that in the, what, 80s and went to work at New York City Transit. I'm now happily retired from there, you know, and still doing art and theater and anything else. Yes, Lawrence Adrian, good friend of Bill. <laughs> Actually from Jamaica, from high school, the big track star. <laughs> right. Yes, the great, the great one from the Fortis cadre. <laughs> is, is that how it is? Fortis. Fortis, perfect blood. Yes. <laughs> Representing Jamaica College, the great fervent. Throwing a spoke in the wheel of the, ferv of the Fortis. Right, Jabi. <laughs> no, but it's our love because when we get when we get together, it's not about separation. It's about togetherness. That that never takes place unless it's in fun and in jest. So, because life is much more serious than that, and we cross all borders and boundaries. We don't observe those. We deal with people. And um, yes, my name is Brian. And I am happily retired every day, Saturday and Sunday for me, right, from um, that drudgery. And I'm never bored. I have a lot of work that we keep doing as part of the Magnolia Tree Earth Center and as part of operating, like I said, an internet radio station that provides service 
to the community. We are always highlighting something that needs to be addressed within the community, so we keep it like that. And Jabi is a good brethren over the years, trust me. And I always enjoy singing. Always did. And you know, especially the ballads and you know his work let me know that he is a lover. <laughs> in every sense of the word across all Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a good thing that you you get from reading the book also. There's a lot of love within the book. All right. <laughs> Greetings, Sister Coochie. And health and wellness, I'm into health and wellness. And I believe that it's very, very important for us to know that the first medicine is herbal medicine. And um, what we can do, we're talking about a lot of stuff that's going on within our community. Last night on our show, we spoke about RSV. Look it up. It's a new um, uh, respiratory condition affecting our children and also killing our children. Adults can get it, but it's not going to be fatal. So we are always on Global Meds Radio promoting health and wellness. That's like I said, if you don't have good health, all the money in the world isn't going to help you. So I'm thankful and um, give gratitude for each and every one that's in here. This is a very, very spiritual space, historical space. And I'm so happy that um, Bill <laughs> has chosen Magnolia to do his book signing and his record release. I'm grateful to each and every one again, and I said you're in a very, very spiritual, and um, you should be honored to be here as I am. Give thanks. Yes, um, my name is Ruff Scott, AKA David Culture. I met Jabi probably 15 years ago and um, Roots Groundation store on Ocean Avenue, one of the best Roots drinks in town, <laughs> you know. We're so sorry, it, uh, you know, it's not around anymore, but um, so from then, we've been doing music, and I've been an artist now for over 30 years. Uh, I've done many great shows, um, opened up for the likes of Yellow Man, and I've been on tour and everything, and I, um, one thing that, that we try to do in music, or we do in music, basically, is we always spread the positive vibration word out there so people could really get inspired by not only you know teachers but also artists and right now we need more positive vibration out there you know so um i want to say that tonight it's a great night and jabi enough respect and i wish the best and i you know for your book and everything all right blessings My name is Val Heron. Um, I've known Bill since he was three years old, <laughs> growing up in Rallington Town. And um, we have a connection in music and football. We've been uh, closely knit all these years. And, um, and I appreciate the fact that He's making this 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 step, progressive step, to enlighten all of us to what he's doing. Peace and love, Brother Bill. Greetings, Milo Henry, and I work closely with Ross Bean's sister Coochie at Global Med Radio. We we believe positive roots music is food for the soul and we try to promote positive vibrations through music and so we you know we play every friday night if you want to check me out every friday night 10 p.m globalmeds.net and i met brother bojangles through um brother marlon who's an, another great brother who's not here from ujama hell food store on utica avenue and Brother Bill was in the back singing with the Ayaso band, and I introduced myself to him, and I, I got his book, and I even got his, his autograph and everything inside. So, you know, so looking forward to reading it, brother, and congratulations. Thank you. Right? And tomorrow I'm going to have a nice, relaxing Sunday and, and start reading the book. So blessed love, and continue with the music. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. 
Well, it is indeed a pleasure for me to be here. The book that Bill have written is not just Bill's story, but is the story of the immigrant from the Caribbean coming to New York and making life. Because when you go to any new place, you, have, uh, you, you get tested. And we, the first immigrant who come in the late 80s, early, early 70s, we, we were tested. And we st stood the test of time and become part of the New York society. And I'm looking in the room and I see quite a few of us are in radio, are in music. You know, I too host a talk show on Global Meds every Saturday. And my specialty is politics and spirituality because I feel we must be able to explain what is going on in our community and what we need to do to move forward. Because the dominant society in terms of African people try to dumb us down. So we have the responsibility to awake to chart the course to move us forward. Brother Carla here, he has a show also promoting the music. And it's great to see so many of us that are able to project ourselves beyond our community this community here, because internet radio now is all over the world. We can share our message with our brothers and sisters on the continent, in the Caribbean. My show is called the Pan-African Connection. And it's about bringing the family together and tell people we don't have nothing to be ashamed of. The people who colonize us are the ones that should be ashamed because they tried to strip us of our humanity. So what Bill have done is a excellent work and we need more writers. We need more of us to tell our story because for too long, there have been other people who've been stealing our story and making a lot of breads, money, or whatever you call it. So it's time now we tell our story, our authentic stories, because there are some who come and sit around us just to steal our product but we must now take control and make it our duty and our responsibility to guide the younger generation. And I think my brother Bill has done an excellent job. Thank you. Oh, good evening, my name is Isata B. And uh, I was invited by Sister Kuchi she told me that Bill, who I know from the community, um, was having a book signing. And I says, hmm, you don't really hear that. That's uncommon. And I think in, in this light, I need to be here. So I'm pleased to be here with everyone and, you know, just enjoying the good vibes. When, oh, I'm a nurse. I work in the public school system. I'm a school nurse. I take care of little babies. And hopefully, one of these days, I could say, well, I'm a proud retiree, too. <laughs> huh? <laughs> OK. Well, no. What do you want people to walk away after reading this book? What do you want them to walk away with? 
with a sense of purpose and direction, you know, because as a youth, I realize that you always have options, you understand? And you have to be intelligent enough. You have to be a part of your parents' progress to choose the right road because our most basic education comes from our parents, from our community. Can you imagine one youth being educated by everybody in this room? You understand? If that youth was going astray and each of us was to take that youth for 10, 15 minutes, maybe half an hour, and educate him, you know, that youth would have a much better sense of purpose. You understand? I myself working as an investigator of child abuse and neglect was able to show a lot of youth's direction. You understand? And something that I find lacking is structure. And I emphasize it in this book. There is no set bedtime. There is no set meal time. You know, you find youths having to go to school in the morning, coming in at 10, 11 in the night. You know, they don't have a set time to take a bath and go to bed. They don't have a set time to do homework. It's like a lot of families are dysfunctional. And I'm not just speaking about families where the parents are on drugs. Understand? So the next thing that I emphasize in my book is structure. Understand? Um, I also emphasize spirituality and history. Because if you don't know who you are, you don't know where you're going. Understand? So that is, and, and the next thing is I am a firm believer in reincarnation of the spirit. You understand? So you have to have some form of spiritual foundation to be able to really understand who you are in this struggle, you know, because what we see on the television and what we hear on the radio is not even the half of it. You understand? Because this world that we live in is so narrow and is so controlled by the powers that be that we, we wouldn't even recognize. You understand? What's really going on? Like, like Brother Shaka was saying, there are people who their entire life is based on keeping us confined, cornered, understand, and on this low degrading level. And if we don't recognize that and find a way to snap out of it, then we are in big trouble, you understand? So those are some of the things that I um, point out, structure, um, empowerment, spirituality, you understand, in this book, and that's what I want to impart on a lot of kids. Education, also, you know, I'm big on education. Yes, I don't know if you want to share with the audience the process of putting the book together. Did you, was it kind of creator or was it to keep going? Well, you know, it's, it's funny how this book really came about. It wasn't the first book that I attempted to write, but I was a member of a soccer team named Tafari that was very prolific in the mid-70s because it was the first Rastafarian soccer team in Brooklyn. When we ran out over by boys, uh, you wouldn't believe the reception, you know what I'm saying? And that team was... Um, important because at that time, a lot of our parents had to work two and three jobs to make ends meet. So they weren't really giving us that time. That's a part of the, the structure that we needed. So the, the soccer team became like our second family, that unity, that socialization is what we needed. You understand? And it wasn't just about soccer, it was about cultural 
experience. You understand? And a lot of us really became uh, more culturally aware, you know, of, of, of who we were at that time. And when one um, person, Diego Garden, died, he was a very um, famous um, Jamaican soccer player. And so I started getting calls about writing a book about the Tafari soccer team. But when I thought about it, I didn't feel it warranted just writing about soccer, you understand? So I reflected on all the experiences that we had, both good and bad. And there's a lot about soccer in the book, but like I say, I wrote it more from a social perspective, you understand? In terms of what we did to, to make progress, um, who took the high road and who took the low road, who went hustling and, and who went to college, you understand? I guess most of us here are the ones who <laughs> went the college route, you understand? But some, some people didn't really finish. You know, when I say finish, they, they fell along the wayside because they didn't have the right perspective. You know, so the book, even though I was asked to write it and to write it about soccer, I felt it was more important to bring across the struggles that we went through and how our coping mechanisms, you understand how we coped with these struggles back in the days and a lot of our coping me mechanisms came through culture, um, particularly Rastafari culture. Coming, right? Yeah. yeah we expect. And, uh, and on the sea. Well, um, I know we we did a show um, on your television program a few years back where we um, presented a lot of material from our first album. Um, we have a new album that reflects. Um, purpose, you know, um, direction. Um, and you know, we always grab a few little lovers, like uh, Rasta is about love. <laughs> yeah, so we never always have that in there. But I think at this point in time, our eyes are open to the fact that not everyone around you is necessarily for you. So there is some strong material, for instance, um, most of the members of the band love a song that is called Mix Up. The rest of the man don't like Mix Up. You understand? Because you have a lot of wagonists, you know. When you're down, they don't want to come around. But when the Supergo start, all of a sudden them want to come and act like they was there for you all the while. You understand? That is why these people right here are where they are, because these are the people who have educated, strengthened, molded, advised me from a teenager up to this point in time. And I appreciate them because if I'm wrong, as old as I am, them going to come and say, you know, you're wrong. And that is the kind of people I want to be around. You understand? Strong, mature, educated people that if they see me doing something wrong, they will come and say, but I'm going to like what you're doing. You understand? So I, for one, think my progress has been slow because I have good people around me. And, you know, sometimes when you have intelligence, they say a genius can be the wickedest person on earth. So... You know, when, when you have intelligence and education, you need strong people to keep your focus. Yes, and so I think the album is about the strength, the spirituality, and the focus that we have going forward at this point in time. You before, know? before you go, um, anything we can touch on you want to mention? Black Lives Matter. 
Don't claim you love the king. Still you come with gesturing. Bearing malice and corruption. <laughs> you know, yeah, just one love still, you know. Yeah, and togetherness and unity. That's where I deal with all the while. And put hands and heart together and see how much progress we can make you know, as a community. The book is currently on Amazon KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing. It's entitled The Unwanted Children, you know, by Claude Rowe, which is my should I say official name? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have other names, I have a lot of names, but this name. <laughs> listen, when I, I say it, it may sound funny, but since I've been here, I've, I've been given so many names, and I appreciate them all, you know, because they kind of let me know people see me. When I used to play soccer, they used to call me Daddy Long Legs. Because <laughs> when you think you pass me, the legs still stretch out. Bill Bones, Bill Heights, Billy Dread, they're all me, you know. So I don't know if they're all the egos or what, but I try to stay grounded. And like I said, all these people kind of keep me grounded. <laughs> yeah. So it goes. Mm. Any other book um, this is going to be added in? Are you trying to write another book? But yes, most definitely, you know, because I spent like 12 years working in the foster care system, and that is a story that has to be told. Because again, you know, um, they talk about conspiracy theory, but that for one is directly dear to kind of keep us, you know, cornered, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, that's, that's like having your children and then giving them to somebody else to, to grow, yeah. you know, for the simplest of reasons, you know. And some, most of the times you, you, your kid don't end up being better off when they're in a foster home, for real. You know, the kid belongs with the parents, but there are not enough services for us to really keep the child. You understand? And, and there could be, but the government does not insist on putting these services in place. And one thing I must add, there is not an adequate um, provision of services for teenagers. They can provide for children, newborn up to like nine years old. But once you touch 12, 13, there are no services. That's why all these kids are running around with guns, shooting up one another. You know, And a lot of them are youths who have aged out of the foster care system. I would never realize that. Well, um, last question. Um, someone who supports you mentioned tonight, um, are you? Ask me that question, and I'm going to ask you, are you planning to turn your writing into a film? Um, I've, I've been approached about it, you know. And to be quite honest, I kind of wrote it with that in mind. I think it would make an excellent movie or a sitcom, you know, especially the way that it, it concludes. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's also been talk about getting it into the colleges as a humanities book, kind of literature book. You know. yeah. well, thanks for having us. Thank you. And thank you, sir. Thank you very much, my brother. Yes, yeah. Just want to say, give thanks and praise to the Most High for bringing us together on this most momentous occasion. Now, this sounds to be most cold and fair. Yeah. Down by Magnolia Tree Art Center. Yeah, this is just a jam session, you know, because at least once a week we get together and jam this jam. And 
I want to say much respect to my Virgin Nova people because it was a COVID musician. <laughs> When, when I say a COVID musician, this man take up the guitar about the time that the whole COVID thing started. And when we hear him now, we say, no man, you have to come come at the people here which part. <laughs> yeah, that's that. Yeah, so, and when you don't know, can I? Just tell him, send that puppy, get some lessons from him. Yeah, actually, when he hear the man chop me, I said, no, check him. Yeah, I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk, but what is not this? Anything on the play, anything on the field comfortable. I'm going to show you a showcase for the tonight. We know a lot of big people who are loving it. This one, you know, when we get together sometime, we just go up on the internet and look up some tune and find the cards. And when we don't know, we learn the language. Can a man tell us, well, that is one, five, two, three. And I said, that's so like a lot of number. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's a card sequence, you know what I'm saying? So this is one of the songs. I think this was originally done by who? Balakai, right? And then covered by Otis Gill in reggae. So if, in case you were wondering, just in case you were wondering, I guess you're wondering where I've been. I've searched to find a love within I came back to let you know Got a thing for you and I can't let go My friends wonder what is wrong with me But I'm in your days for your love
Family, but him go out and see this sister and feel him in love. And he might go poor Terry, you understand? And I'd agree with you, Daryl, I look my sister to but in mind and tell her I shouldn't do it. So, it, it, like I said, sometimes we have options. So, I wrote the song. I didn't think of the scenario when I was writing it, it just came to me. I don't know how. I guess it's probably just a part of my nature. But um, it's called I Saw the Light, and I really wanted to sing it for whoever showed up tonight. So here we go. I hope you enjoy it, all right? <laughs> Listen to it carefully, all right? Yeah. But at the end of the night, 
And though it may seem unkind, I must protect my reputation. So my mind kept telling me you should.
Some know Kyle Lyle and Keyboard, you know. Better than the other thing to say. Life is so nice when the people dance to the Ayasa song. Come and take a ride, spend some time. Watch the people dance to the Ayasa song. Hear me now, sing if you want to sing. Dance if you want to dance. Jam if you want to jump. To the Ayasa song, yeah. Rock if you want to rock. Come and form a line. Rock to the rhythm and the bass line in this Ayasa song. Different places from different places come together now to dance the Ayasa song. And to look at all the men's games, the moon. Come and jump and dance to the Ayaso song, to the Ayaso song, to the Ayaso song, to the Ayaso song. Me no eat ham, me 
no evil deed, be no butter and jam. No train me beat, no mental flim flam. I'm not related to the rich man of Sam. When you think about somebody with the scam, take it from my elders like them. Don't give a damn, I want to shut down them up a rich and tight like a clown. Scam the wrong man, you will get a clown, clown. Keep on calling, calling.
come to New York. Bright lights fix the tip, we'll know. Welcome, welcome to New York. Don't be that pity, well now. The city never sleeps at night, everybody's living it up now. People party into broad daylight, dancing to their favorite song. And them girls dressed in their latest thing. To the rhythm, them are swing and sway, everyone is doing their own thing. Welcome, welcome to New York. Bright lights fix the tip, we'll know. Welcome, welcome to New York. Town without pity, well now. In the summertime you have some fun, on John Street your prospect behind. Find a secret place to spend some time with your woman after dark. Ride, go the north from nine to five. All the scenic route 17, east or west, it's so alive. Welcome to New York. Welcome to New York. Welcome, welcome, welcome to New York. But I Don't take 
let the king steal you come with jestering bearing malice and corruption when I was down you wouldn't come around now things are looking up you won't come save my anchor mm. mix up mix up mix up mix up the rest of my no life mix up no don't claim you love my mama and want to date my sister bring in clever conversation don't come run no split no no one to sip my cup for the rest of my no life mix up no mix up mix up mix up mix up the rest of my no life mix up A lot of us can identify with this tune. Yeah, man. Yeah. But we know where we're coming from and we know where we're going. So we got to keep it in flow, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To be a soldier in your army. Our ends and our must be pure and clean Cause when we're down, Ja guides us on the way So when we're up, Ja loves we must obey Don't claim you were my hydrant right to the very end Still you will fight against my religion don't come round no spliff no, no one to sit my cup, cause the rest of men, the light makes up. Mix up, mix up, mix up, mix up, the rest of men, the light makes up. One more time now, mix up, mix up, mix up. No, no, don't stay out gate and don't you pass my gate. Cause if you stop, my bad dogs are gonna bite you. <laughs> yeah, mix up, mix up, mix up, rest of my life, mix up. One more time now. Hope you enjoyed our little jam session. And I want to thank each and every one for showing up tonight. You know, circle of friends is always great and powerful. Yeah, so let's keep it tight. And let's keep it original and official and sincere. Yeah. As we move on into another year called 2020. May our hands and hearts be real pure and clean. May we live real free. Right around the ice cold and green, yeah man. With no mix up. Yeah. Good friends, good brothers and sisters. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah.